Hey, I'm Jeff Baumgartner with Lay Reading. We're here in Denver at Cable Next Gen Technologies and Strategies, and I'm pleased to be joined by Charles Cheevers with Vantiva. Yeah, Vantiva so, now, Jeff. Vantiva, it's been, what, a few weeks? It hasn't been that it's long, right? January 9th CES, we uh, became Vantiva the first day of CES. Okay, and that was your first day there. Yeah, okay. you mentioned what, 14 years of doing this event. Yeah. I think it's 17, yeah. 17, 17, yeah. Yeah, that's, I feel about 14 of those, I think. Okay, well, I think I'm around that number too, so we're right in sync. But uh, today, we're you know, one of the things we're talking about a lot is Doxus 4.0, and you know, definitely on the network, but also talking about the modem, the CPE yeah. side, right? And yeah. Vantiva's like, oh, that's in the wheelhouse yes. over there. Yeah. So um, we just got off the door, the, the Doxus 4.0 panel. So can you just reiterate a little bit on yeah, the activity, the roadmap yeah, for 4.0 at Vantiva. Yeah. It's certainly the year. I mean, up to now we've been talking about 4.0, but we certainly have products in the mix, right? We have two box and one box architectures. We have, um, you know, line of sight to seeing the start of the rollout of Doxus 4.0 and all it can bring. Um, it it is a um, it is a technology that's going to just not be for speed, right? It's also for uh, it's a platform, there's increased MIPS in it. Everything in the device has improved, right? The LAN interface support for 10 gig, the MIPS on the chips, the Wi-Fi support for Wi-Fi 7 now. So all that's now ready to uh, to roll out for whatever tier of service and whatever tier of customer the operators want. And as we discussed on the panel, right, it's, it's a unique time in the generations of Doxus, even though I think, you know, it is right that the CMTS and the node have to be aligned with CPE, but in previous years, what really happened was that someone announced that 3.1 was ready in the node. And I think this one might be a little bit different in that uh, the the 4.0 devices might start rolling out um, and running 3.0, sorry, 3.1 mode initially until the network catches up with it. I mean, right. uh, has there been a lot of uh, discussion with operators about that option and kind of say, hey, we can, we have an opportunity to maybe seed the market with 4.0 CPE as we're developing I think it, the network? I think it gives them options. Obviously, where there's competition, you put in the new stuff, right, to compete with competition if it's at the higher performance. But because these devices now are also attached to Wi-Fi 7, right, when you're marketing Wi-Fi, new, better Wi-Fi performance, you may not have the network quite ready for that particular node, and you may want to offer those solutions. And that's been the beauty of Doxus, right, because everything, every time we've done Doxus, we've had to make it backward compatible. So we still support those single carrier qualms even for 3.0 mode, right? And, and so that's the beauty of it, that the, when, when the operator has this to deploy, certainly for high-end services, as they start to see the opportunity to deploy for Wi-Fi 7 alone, not just the speed on the access network, they'll probably pop those out to other, other areas as well where the network will catch up eventually with it then. Okay, and in addition to 4.0, we did talk a little bit about the other chatter going on in the industry, and that is second generation 3.1, where you're, yeah. there are gonna be devices out there that can do more yeah. OFDM channels, and therefore you can do more speed and not yeah. worry about yeah. single channel QAM yeah. as much. Um, now, how does that fit in at Vantiva? What are your thoughts about that? Um, is that a, uh, uh, a possible option that will have some legs? It is, I think just, just you, I think you were on the panel, you were talking about two areas. One is a specific 3.1 plus, 3.1 enhanced, 3.1. Uh, uh, stretch, stretch, turbo. Stretch, turbo, yeah. ultra doxis. Yeah. Um, that, that, we've tested that one, right? And it seems like most operators, I think, want to go for the full 4.0 capabilities in the device and, and then be able to say they can run it in 3.1 mode, 3.1 plus and 4.0. And, um, you know, the question is, you know, is it worth putting out a 3.1 plus only device that can't do maybe the upstream uh, additional uh, speeds above 204? Because that's really where the definition is. On the downstream, they can do up to 5 OFDMs, but on the up upstream, the full yeah. 4 can do the ultra high splits or the FDX or whatever yeah. it is going on. You said 3.0, 3.1's so limited 3 to 204? Yeah. Well, or, or is that? Yeah, typically okay. the 3.1 plus devices would be an 85, 204 split. They would not support the 396 high split for 4 full 4 Okay. If, it, if we're doing ESD, and then obviously FDX would be, wouldn't be would be supported in those devices. Okay. And the last thing I want to talk about is Wi-Fi, because I think you know, you've been all over the evolution of Wi-Fi yeah. recent years, and it feels like uh, Wi-Fi 7 kind of goes hand in hand with Doxus 4.0. Yeah. We're starting yeah. to see that yeah. in some of the initial yeah. 4.0 uh, products that yeah. like Comcast is talking about. Uh, and I guess the question there is, um, I mean, is, is that going to be the pairing or is there a role for even uh, Wi-Fi 6E 
you know, for, for there is. I think the, the, so. I think what we've seen is the modem can four O modem can be built, and then you can pair that with a, any Wi-Fi solution, Wi-Fi seven included. Even even you could repurpose some of your existing Wi-Fi six E Doxus devices to you know just use the six E on them for for um, four O speeds. Uh, equally, then you can have an all-in-one device that then is going to Wi-Fi seven. Um, so it's, it's and then there are some operators, as you know, who just who have a modem solution and use third-party retail uh, applications for Wi-Fi. Um, so all those options are there between building a modem and an all-in-one gateway. And certainly, we've seen for Inventiva, for example, we have the uh, modem solution, EMTA solution, um, all-in-one Wi-Fi 7 solution, and a standalone Wi-Fi 7 AP to pair with those modems and EMTAs. And between that, that combination, I think we cover all the elements. And you know, it's it's as I said on the panel, right? It's I think you know certain unification in the industry would be good to sort of have um, a solution that one everything fits all. But every operator has unique differences. They have opinions on uh, symmetric speeds or not, timing, uh, two box, one box, and it is converging, right? But uh, again, even if you have, we, we don't even in three one we had splits between eighty five uh, only devices because a little bit cheaper than having two or four split in there, right? Uh, and then you know some operators have moved to two or four faster than others. So all that dynamic makes it a little bit more variable, right? But I think we've with the options that we've put on the table and the silicon guys have and the front ends for uh, RF, I think we can cover all of them within the, the requirements for the next few years anyway. All right, and on our panel you brought up Wi-Fi 8, right? And I'm yeah. just getting I'm just getting my head around Wi-Fi 7, and those products are just coming to the market. So if I'm an operator, what, what's the biggest takeaway from Wi-Fi 8? It's 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 called ultra high reliability Wi-Fi. It's really meant for these type of buildings where the goal is to try and have multi-access APs here never have a contention slot or a congestion on any Wi-Fi packet because they're all in harmony with each other. Uh, Wi-Fi today doesn't really work like that. A controller types to tries to manage them, but what Wi-Fi 8 is trying to do is have ultra high reliability in in dense. You know, enterprise when you're in work in a big office, when you're here at a, at a trade show or whatever. Um, it's not, I don't see it as relevant to the home initially. Obviously, enterprise stuff tends to come into the home, but I would say that we'll see Wi Fi 7 as a residential application go right through the initial rollout of Wi Fi 8, mostly for, you know, solutions like Ruckus that Comscope would have or whatever, right? So that that's what I think is going to happen. It, it might change, right? But I think the Wi Fi 7 is set up to be the the main residential Wi-Fi solution for you know way into the Wi-Fi 8 space, which is timed at around 2027 as, as uh, at the moment. Okay, well we'll keep an eye on where Wi-Fi 7 goes and where Wi-Fi 8 will go. But uh, Charles, great to catch up with you. Thanks Same for here, your Jeff. time and taking all my questions. You do a great job. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.